my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try to fix up a job lot of controllers that I got from eBay. Got them for a very fair price, £28, just a little bit less for all of them, that's including postage. And they're down as Power A Nintendo Switch controllers not working or parts only. Now these four are definitely Nintendo Switch but this one's not. Unfortunately this one won't be able to be fixed because this is for the Xbox One and you need a separate dongle so it is a wireless controller but you need a dongle to plug it in it doesn't sync directly to the xbox so i can't fix that because i haven't got the dongle this one here i cannot find any fault with whatsoever every feature on it is working so i won't be doing anything with that one and with these three here luckily i have got faults so this one here we've got the l and the zl not working this one here we have the zr not working and this one we have two sticky buttons a and b although they work they're not as responsive as these buttons here so they need to be cleaned so let's get them straight over to the blue mat and see if we can get them fixed up so let's start with this one so with this one the l and the zl button are not working everything else works what's also nice on these controllers is that you can map buttons here so let me just quickly show you how that works if you hold this middle button down you will see that this little light here will start flashing and then if we want to for example map uh, click in on this stick here click in here and then let's map that to this button and now every time we press that button you can see it's click in and then again we can map that button there so hold this in here and let's say if we want to map that to A and then hit this button you will now see that that becomes A quite nice they actually feel like all right controllers quite light on this one because there's no battery or anything and this is wired only right so let's find out why these two buttons here are not working so let's take it apart and see if it becomes obvious just got a load of crosshead screws at the back so while I'm undoing these screws here let's give a shout out to this video sponsor which of course is the my mate Vince massive and this month the massive consists of operational 117 kitdigital.com kip hakes max rockatansky having fun repairs ellensburg amplifier repair and service Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, the My Mate Vince Fan Club over on Facebook, Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, Doctor Restoration, Mr. Directory, Mediasteamer.com, Draw Emotive Garage, and Rob Hughes. So big thanks to all them and all the Patreons that support these trying to fix videos. It's got a headphone jack on the bottom of this one as well. Right, okay, so what we've got here. These buttons here are not working and they're connected via a ribbon cable to here. Is the ribbon cable okay? Well, still seems to be attached on that side of the board there. Hard to tell on this side because it's so crushed up. Let's undo this board and then uh, that will give us access to the joints, the solder joints on this cable. Okay. That's that. I'm going to leave that there so I don't have to undo all those buttons. And here we have it here. Well, it all seems to be quite nicely made. You can see the cheaper analog sticks here. You can see the metal ones here. So these are the same ones that are in the fake Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. But these are not fake. These are licensed. These are just cheaper controllers. Oh, it unclips from here. Here we go. Unclips there. Where else does it clip? Ooh, back in the go oh, and here as well clips here as well it's nice seeing other controllers sometimes there we go right so now we want access over here pop that out it's all coming apart very very nicely and that's just going to come out there So we've got no response at all. Let's see if we can take this little board out. Yes, we can. Now, let's see what well, it's still connected up here. Hmm, this might be an interesting one. Would it, could it be just dirty contacts on here? Right, I think I might be able to see the problem. Let me zoom in here and show you. It looks like that bottom trace here is uh, possibly broken, the, the solder joint. Right, so if you have a look here, yeah, that's gone there, isn't it? 
Now, is it just got pushed through or has it taken the pad away with it? In fact, where is it fed from? Looks like we've got a trace going up here, possibly. It's very hard to see because it's kind of white on white. So we have a, is that the one that's gone there? No, it's the inside, this one here. So where is this fed from? I can't see, would that be a ground? Let me get my multimeter. Yes, a ground. So just missing the ground, so that's why it's not working. So worst case scenario, even if it is broken, I can just move that wire to here. But let's just see if a solder, well actually look, we know that it's okay from here. So even if it's ripped on the other side, as long as I can get soldered this side, it's gonna work fine. But let's just try to resolder it this side here. Take that stick off there and let's see what happens when we reflow these. And the broken one. Let's get a load of solder in there, try to get it all the way through. No, we don't want to go through, does it? Right, I'm going to solder up this side then. Now the tip I've got is quite big, so it's probably going to melt a little bit of this cable, but it won't matter. There we go. You know what, I'm going to try to get a little bit of solder just in this side here. Can you see? It looks like there's a tiny little gap just in this bit. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit in just here, up here. In fact, it might be easy to do from this angle. Yeah, I'm going to go in the top there. There we go. Okay, so that's done now. I'm going to pop it back together and let's see if it's working. So it was the L and the ZL which is not working. And yay, you can see they're working now. Completely responsive and everything else as well. Nice, easy fix. Right, let's move on to, I think we'll do the st sticky button one next because that's going to be quite a boring one. Let's do that in the middle of the video. With this one, they do work, so there's no point in me plugging it into the switch but I don't even think you're gonna be able to see it, but you might be able to hear the difference. They just don't feel as loose as uh, the X and the Y, but you know what? Even from just repeatedly hitting them now, I can already feel they're loosening up. Probably don't need to take this one apart. I could probably just clean it here with some IPA, but let's just quickly, there's only uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven screws at the back. Let's just quickly take it apart, and then we know we can properly clean it, and also we might see some other damage. Right, I can already see a load of uh, crust has just come out of that bottom one there. So maybe something was spilt on this one. Look at that, they've put these weights in here just purely to give it some weight. These controllers don't have rumble. Look at that, to make it feel higher quality. Right, so it's these two here, I can see, can you see there's a tiny little sticky bit here? Yeah, I think something's been spilt on here. Let's give it a clean with IPA. And also, yeah, there. Can you see that there? That's it there. Let's pop these out. Yeah, this could have just been clean from the outside because look, if 
you look at the difference between, for example, the top one here, which is just a little bit dirty compared to that one around the edge there, which has quite a lot of sticky stuff on it. There you go, all the way around there, and that one there. So that's the reason these two were sticky. So although I couldn't really show you it, you can now see what was causing it. Actually, I can see grime around everything, so I'm just gonna clean everything on here. Nice and, nice and clean again. Now let's do the buttons. Do you know, I don't think I've ever gone through a video without spilling the IPA. Yeah, look at that all the way around there. Right, that's all clean now, so it's just a case of putting it all back together. And every single button on here is keyed, so you can't put it in the wrong place. Even this, that side there, is slightly bigger than that side there, so it won't fit in the wrong way. Now, I've noticed on fake controllers that also use similar sticks to these, that often these are not soldered on. Now, I know they don't need to be, but the thing is, the only thing that's soldered on are basically the potentiometers and the click button. And even the click button, can you see, they've only gone onto two pads here. So there's a lot more chance of that failing because if they went onto all four pads, then if this one here broke, then uh, this one or this one would take, I presume it would be this one would take over. Yeah, let me just double, let me just double check that. I think I'm gonna solder them all up. Right, so between here and here we have nothing, and if we click in, there, yeah, we've got something, yeah. Now between here and here we have nothing, click in, we've got something, yeah. So they haven't soldered those ones there. So if I do solder them, it's gonna be a better job, isn't it? Because it means then, if you were to drop this and one of these here were to fracture, chances are, hopefully, it would still work if you had the other two. And as well as that, by doing these massive anchor points here, you're gonna give it more strength, because at the moment, we've only got it placed through, which is still giving it strength, but if these were bent over, it would give it more strength or soldered. So I think it was worth taking this one apart. Now, I believe these controllers cost £20 from places like Argos in the UK. And originally they would come with a wired, a USB cable, a wired. Good thing is, because it's not attached, if it fails, which is gonna be the most likely failure on the actual cable, then you can just swap it out, which is great. But it, it is a little bit of a shame that they didn't solder them up because I wonder how much extra that would cost time and uh, solder in the factory. Surely it wouldn't cost much. It's just kind of doing the bare minimum, which is, I don't know. I wonder originally was it done and then the accountants got hold of it and realized that they could make another three pence on each controller, maybe, three or four pence. And I suppose if you're knocking out worldwide, thousands and thousands of these, then over the year that adds up. Be interesting to take apart the very first model of the Nintendo Switch ones from Powerade to see if they were soldered up or not. Anyway, there you go, you can see they're all soldered up now and they've come out nice. Let's get the back back on this. Okay, here goes. D-pad. That's working, click in, A and B now feel perfect. 
And great thing about the Nintendo Switch is it makes it so easy to be able to also do the stick drift as well. Because you just click in and you can see here that there is no stick drift. If it was a circle, you know you've got a bit of stick drift and often you can actually see it moving like that. Right, let's move on to the final controller. Now on this one here, we've got the ZR not working. So this one here. So if you have a look, everything else works. But yet when it comes to this one here, nothing. So let's have a look, see why ZR is not working. Now this one is a wireless one. And it's got the same setup at the back where you can do uh, other button presses on these two buttons here. Now I believe these ones are slightly more expensive. I think the equipment looks to be about £40, so £20 less than the real controller. Right, instantly you would think it's got water damage all around here, but I don't think that is because it just looks like flux because it's on all the soldered points. Everywhere that's solder you have that there. So I don't think that is water damage. Looks a mess. Okay, let's uh, strip it down. Yeah, there's no sign of any water damage on this side here. Oh, so it's this one here which is not working. So let's have a look at the cable. Let's see if there's the same thing wrong that was wrong with the other one. So it's this one. Ah, there we go, look. Cracked. Can you see there, the board's cracked here. Yeah. Right, so let's strip it down and see if it can be fixed. If you look at this one, you see that's nice and straight all the way across. Oh, this one is split here. So obviously it's broken through a trace. Yeah, interesting. So the trace that is feeding the RZ, which is uh, same as Z. Hold on a minute. Yeah, RZ, right Z and right B, right bumper. Even though that's not what they're called on, uh, on the Nintendo because it should be just right and uh, ZR. But anyway, you can see that the trace, let me zoom in, you can probably even see it there now, the trace on the outer one here has got the cracking and that then feeds this pad here, you see. So that is not going to be going to here. Let's see if we can verify that with the meter. Okay, so this is going to here and here. there but not there and there okay and not here fine rz is not going to be going to here because it's not working and we've got a break in the track here and i presume that this one is going to here yes it is it's just that it's not going to set my meter off because it's 78 ohms there we go no 23 ohms it is is that one going to set it off no, that's 70 ohms, but because that's nearer, that's setting it off. 46 ohms and 52 ohms. That's why it's not beeping. Right, let's, uh, let's scrape this back and try to do a join between here and here. Well as that, I'm going to run the wire, but I think I'm going to try to just jumper it with solder or just on this bit here. But I am going to run the wire from here to here for a better job. I'm just going to clean the tip of my iron with some of this solder cleaner. That stuff. Let's see if we can jumper up that. I'm not going to use flux on here because I think I have more chance of jumpering it without flux. I'm going to lower my iron right down now to 340 degrees Celsius. Because hopefully then it won't melt so quick and I'll be able to uh, flow it over. Oh, 
Right, there we go, so that's jumpered there. Now let's get a little bit of wire and do a proper job. Well, I've got a little bit of uh, Cat5 or Cat6 wire here. I think this one's Cat5e. Okay, there we Do you know what? I'm not happy with that white insulation there, so I'm taking it off and I'm just going to put some solder mask on that and then that will look uh, a better job. But anyway, you can see now I've gone from the broken side to here, but as well as that, the solder's done it as well. So it's kind of like hopefully belt and braces. Let's clean that up and put some solder mask on that. Put a UV pen on it and then it will, the UV light, and then it will be uh, hopefully working. So I'm just putting on some UV curing solder mask. And now I'm going to put the UV light on it. So I'm just waiting for this solder mask to go off. And while I'm doing that, I thought I'd just have a look in this little Xbox controller. I know I can't fix it because I haven't got the dongle to go with it. But what's quite interesting is look at the way they've done the analog triggers. So on the Xbox controllers, you have like Hall effect sensors. But look how they've done it here. They've got a little potentiometer there. And this is moving it. I haven't seen that before, I don't think. Anyway, interesting. What I'm gonna do is, because this board is broken, there's a good chance of that top one breaking as well eventually, maybe if it was dropped again. But to be fair, if the other side's dropped, the same thing's gonna happen on the other side, you're gonna get a crack. But I am just gonna put some super glue down into it, just to try to give it a little bit of strength and then spray the super glue activator so it goes off quick. Epoxy would be a much better job. I'm just worried that if I put epoxy, it's gonna blob up and then these buttons might be too far up and then they might be getting pressed all the time even without the user pressing the button. So it's not really gonna make much difference at all but even if it just gives it a tiny bit of extra strength, it's probably better than nothing there at all. Right, that super glue's done, the UV mask is done, the brake is fixed, so now I'm just gonna remove some of the old flux residue to make it look a bit nicer. And like the last one, let's solder up these missing anchor points. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna put it all back together and see now if the ZR is working. Yeah, here we go. Ah, oh, ZR. So out of the five of them, that can't be fixed, but I'm sure it could be fixed if I had the correct dongle but these four were working. I don't know why this was down as faulty. Maybe with longer term use, I'll find out that it's got stick drift or something, but all the testing I did looks to be perfect. So not the most demanding faults in the world, but real life honest faults that are happening to people every single day of the week. And they're just leaving these controllers thrown in drawers and then eventually thrown away because of tiny little minor things that don't take long to fix at all with not really much specialist tools. Screwdriver, soldering iron and 
these were all fixable. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It was nice to have some nice simple thoughts that you didn't have to rack your brain and spend hours and days on. So uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and I will see you very soon. Take care, everyone. Walk through the door